Um, so, I assume everybody knows who I am. David Zabrowski, I tend to paint uh, and sculpt miniature figures and some busts. Um, I usually paint with um, Humbrol enamel colors, um, but sometimes I use um, oil paints as well. And for this demonstration, um, what I'd like to try and show you is um, how to paint a worn leather effect. This is not quite finished um, using oil paints. So I'm taking it from, from this, which is the plain undercoat, um, and gradually building up the layers and adding onto this to create uh, an effect uh, which looks like a worn leather effect on that, which I made earlier. I had to paint some of these um, to, to different levels of completion because the technique, I couldn't just keep layering it on until it was dry because um, the oils just tend to blend into one another. If you try and build up too many layers at once, um, it would just all blend in and you wouldn't be able to get that worn effect. You did uh, this with oil? Um, yes, these, uh, this was acrylic base coat. Yeah. And then I build up with oils and I'll show you the, um, the okay. mixes. Um, so what I do, what I've started with this was um, undercoating with a, quite a pale color. It's in acrylic, I haven't got the color with me, um, but it's um, something along the lines of this color, like a pale flesh um, mixed with a little bit of um, a, 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 an ochre or something like that. And I did several layers to try and get it quite solid. And then what I do is I'm going to stipple on with some oils and then uh, make some scratches and then build that onto that. So I need to mix the color first. Um, what I'm going, what I'm aiming for is, you see those leather brief, or leather cases where they've got that nice, rich, um, leathery color, but you've got scuff marks and patches which are faded and worn away slightly. So I'm going to try and achieve that. Um, so the first color I did to convert this one to this one will be mixing a color roughly like this. And that is a combination of um, uh, raw umber and some orange and a little bit of um, burnt sienna, maybe just a touch of this. <clears throat> I better keep this open. Um, when I paint with oils, I tend to put some on the card the night before and it soaks out a lot of the oil and that means that when it dries it's not going to be so shiny it will dry slightly flatter <clears throat> I know some people that paint with oils more um, tend to put the uh, paint on the card maybe an hour before the session but, <clears throat> but I prefer to do it the night before and then it's had maybe seven or eight hours for the oil to come out Now, um, for the palette, I tend to use um, one of those tear-off palettes. Um, but this one was a slightly thicker paper than some you get. Um, and this particular one, because it's slightly thicker, if you use water, color, uh, water um, acrylics on with water, it doesn't get all that wrinkled up look about it. It's uh, on a solid. And I'll mix the colors on here. And I want to try and get it something approximating this color. And so I'll take some I'm just adding some orange to the raw umber. And I'm just mix mixing it with a cocktail stick. You can use pretty much anything that <clears throat> you can mix with. <clears throat> you 
see it's not quite there. I'm going to add some um, <coughs> uh, this is um, burnt sienna, which is quite a lovely rich <coughs> brown. Add a bit of uh, light red. Yeah, it's close enough. Okay. Um, yeah, what I'm going to use for the first part, just um, like a flat headed brush and um, I'm not going to thin this paint too much, just slightly the brush, I'll dampen it um, to help spread it more. And what I'll do is I'll just try and do half of this so you can just see how that part develops. <clears throat> see, it's um, quite close to that. It's not quite exact, but it's uh, close enough. The tin? Oh, in this. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is just artist quality white spirit. The reason I use artist quality, I just think it's got less um, impurities. And um, when the paint dries, you don't get so many uh, um, like mottling effect in the paint. So now what I'm just going to do to start with is just stipple this on. Now this, the first part of this doesn't have to be too fussy because when you lay, add the next layers and you then stipple some more. <clears throat> and because of the time is quite short today, I won't do all of this one. I'll try and develop these ones uh, as well. <clears throat> So what will happen is the, the white spirit in that will evaporate quite quickly and as the brush dries I'll continue to then stipple with this brush that's got a bit of residue of the paint in it. Which then creates like a textured effect on that. And this is only step one, so I don't expect it to be perfect. I usually paint under a, mi uh, a magnifying glass yeah. like this. Yeah. So I can see that better. <clears throat> what I might do is take this other brush, which is dry. Um, because with the brush that's drier, it's now then removing just a little bit of the surplus. And where I want the edges of this to be worn, 
I'm trying not to make the paint quite so thick. So I'll stipple that, but the edges will be, you know, leave that so that there's a, mm -hmm. a slight faint. This, uh, if I'm doing it for real, on a real piece, it wasn't a quick demonstration. This stage I might take a bit longer, over 15, 20 minutes. Now once I've done that, I'll take a cocktail stick, which I, this is just sanded slightly, so that it's uh, slightly sharper. And then I might just make some random scratch marks in around the edge, pay particular attention. Try to use the other end. The acrylic is quite, the acrylic undercoat is quite durable, so as long as I don't press too hard, I just let it just. And I should be able to get some. See, so I'm just, just making little scratch with the cocktail stick. Mm -hmm. And I, I would make those more random if I was doing it seriously. Uh, maybe take 20 minutes for the, this first coat. And on here, I'll make some just random scratch marks. And here. And then usually rather than leave that like that, some of the scratch marks I'll try and make them less pronounced by just gently retouching with with the brush that I used originally. So it will still have some residue paint in it, but be quite dry at the same time. And then after a while, I would then get to, this will then become, I would re-emphasize some of the scratches, redo some of that. And then if you don't mind, if you want to pass this, um, <coughs> you can see that's after stage one. Sometimes I might just use my finger to try and take a bit of the, mm -hmm. if it's, t there's too much on the edge. I... Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you get that extra, yeah. and I'll fiddle around just to take <laughs> a bit more off there. Do you need the yellow for the, the underground to, for the leather? Uh, yeah. The, the, um, the end result, the idea is that the oh, undercoat, <laughs> some of it is still coming through the later coats. I'll re-emphasize that with some like, light colored humbrols later around the edges. But I find that if I'm careful, you get almost a natural layering mm. because then this first layer, I've just left a tiny amount at the edge. And then when I add the next darker color, I will leave slightly more I won't go quite to the edge so much and then gradually it's the yellow is homebrew um, the yellow is an acrylic undercoat because I think it was just slightly more resistant to the okay. the scratching than humbrol might be I didn't want the demo going wrong I mean last time when I did it at home I used a humbrol undercoat with um, maybe something like a some this light color and maybe a little bit of oh, oh. and a little um, say this color as well so mix those and you get something approximating this color yeah. 
Now, so the second layer will be um, uh, burnt sienna, which is a very rich, ruddy brown colour, and a um, touch of crimson. Um, we'll see how that looks first. Um, maybe a touch of light red. Sometimes I have to make the colours up as I go along. It's uh, there's no formula. I, oh, I actually I should have used this one. Uh, that was a mistake. Oh dear. Right, so a bit of this red. Sometimes I might just get a bit of the white spirit, which enables me to see. Excuse me, what do you use? White spirit? Oh, white spirit, white yeah. Regular white spirit. Maybe just a tiny touch of black and it's not crimson. It's not white spirit. Buy in a normal shop. It's um, like it's artist, artist white spirit, yeah. yeah. Doesn't smell. Okay, you see, because of the pressure, I can't mix the colours quite right. It's uh, a bit self-conscious now. Now for this second stage, I'm going to take a, a slightly thinner brush. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to be a bit more careful about where I place between the scratches on here. Try and emphasise, build up the... go over the scratches. Yeah. I mean, you can go over, over some of them, but I don't want to completely obscure them. The, yeah. yeah. And for this, rather than watering that, or watering, thinning mm. that down, I will try and use it just as it, as it is to start with. And what I don't want to do is have too much on the brush, because then when you spread that around, so at first I'll be quite careful. And again, I'm trying to avoid going too close to the edge. When we paint um, figures, um, one of the things you probably all, I don't know which of you are figure painters and which are armor painters, but we want to try and achieve something which um, is like an illumination effect. So you'd want like upper facing, parts to be lighter to give it um, three dimensionality more volume and with this technique I can't just lose sight of that completely but for, uh, for now I still need to get the richness of the color within this so I will put still another little bit on there but I will be lightening that down with a slightly different technique later Now this stage is actually quite easy once you once you get started. If this had just dried overnight, it wouldn't be completely dry. Say I start I go over some scratches and I think, okay, I've overdone that. You could still take this cocktail stick and re and the, the oil paint underneath won't be so dry that you can't do that. Oh done here I may have put slightly too much
Right, so what I might do then is um, what I think when you look at the edges, if you've just got it going all to pale, it doesn't seem quite right. You would still have tiny little bits of where the leather hadn't come away. So what I try and do is just add a few little spots where it's darker around. But I have to be careful not to overdo that. So, um, we just sometimes just have to... And then, just a little bit of softening. Wow. So if we compare that with the... Wow. So then after the second, if I do it for the whole thing, on the top part, I might just, just get that so it's clear and just do a tiny, just to get some, just tiny little areas where the color is emphasized. And when you look at that, you start to see the texture forming because of the areas that are coming through aren't being affected. The stippling effect with, to, achieve, to achieve leather is quite effective. Now for the final yeah, colour, what I'm going to do is mix um, with burnt sienna, uh, crimson and some black <clears throat> to try and get a, a richer the darker color of this. You always remove the oils from the, the oil from the paint by adding it to uh, cardboard. I try to do that. Yeah, usually I leave it overnight. Um, that's just because I don't want the the shininess. Um, for some things, if I'm painting, say I'm mixing some to get a darker red, and I'll introduce some white spirit, I may not need to leave it as long because I think the, the white spirit helps to counteract some of the oil, but um, yeah. So... You, you use also the same? When you, use, when you paint faces with the white? Oh, I, I only use Humbrol to paint faces, oh, okay. yeah. Usually I use oil paints if I'm doing a larger area mm -hmm. where I need a smoother transition. Mm -hmm. And Humbrols, it can be difficult. You'd have to do a lot of different layers to get that yeah. transition to be okay. smooth. So you don't do the faces with the white? Not, no, no. You use the same three colors now as the previous layer, only a little bit? Oh. Um, these are the three colors now for the next layer. The um, burnt sienna, crimson, and black. What was the last layer then? Because I wrote those three. Oh, times. the last layer was um, probably burnt sienna, and maybe just a tiny touch of crimson and maybe a tiny touch of uh, the base like colour or light red, something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. So... You have to be quite sparing with the crimson and the black because it would very quickly become too dark. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to just slightly darken the um, burnt sienna. So you'll see if I put some white spirit on that, it's not a ridiculously dark colour. It's um, just a little bit darker. Now this, um, 
this will be the final darkening stage and then I will be starting to re-accentuate the paler colour. Try and get some more contrast. And for this one, I don't want to go too far. Mm -hmm. I just want to just add just that little bit more dark so that when I add the lighter, I've got some contrast. Yeah, I think I might have too much. Too much warm in that one. I think. So again, it's still a, a similar technique. Um, I have to be careful about leaving too much paint on there. This is starting to just get that final richness of color in the, the leather. Only for this technique, yeah, just stippling. But I do use normal stroke technique, but not for this technique, no. Do you use that technique also for clothes? Sometimes, yeah. On, only in certain areas to achieve a nice... Uh, because I, I like to have a bit of texture in the surface. Mm -hmm. I find very bland, smooth finish um, unappealing as a finish. I like to have uh, some texture if I can. If I can't achieve it with a texture of the material, I'll have weathering or some kind of dustiness or griminess. Mm. Now I'm being careful not to go too near to the edge here. Just the bottom there. Because um, this particular piece of mm -hmm. like uh, rucksack or whatever it yeah. was, there, there isn't an obvious, if you painted it just with highlights and shadows in a traditional way, you wouldn't have a lot of interest on it. So it needs to have something. So if you want to just um, have a quick look at that. I mean, I, I probably, in, in my haste, I'm probably obscuring some of the 
fine scratching. scratching. I might, if I had the magnifier and I was able to take more time, I'd probably try and get it between. Okay. So it's not it's not perfect, but it's uh, probably good enough to show you the next. Just fading that in slightly. Okay. And maybe. just re-accentuate a couple of the scratches just to, which were there before yeah, just to mm -hmm. okay so the next stage will be emphasizing the lighter parts just to add a bit more definition um, and so for that I'll use some hum rolls yeah, yeah. Um, now I've got flesh mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what, what that colour is, sand or something like that, but it's, it's a slightly yellower version of flesh. And then a very pale, like a linen-y colour. And um, I think that's a sand, another sandy, so earthy colours. But what I want to do is try and get something approximating a pale, like if you would um, scratched a, a leather mm. and you get that pale colour coming through, mm. it's quite a natural <coughs> pale colour. So I'm going to use this, uh, you know those small screwdrivers you get from... It's just quite useful for... No, I have to be careful not to... Do you shake this or do you leave the, the thick um, Yeah, I don't shake them, I just... Um, when I started painting, I used to stir them for five minutes each, but now I just find that's just too much of a waste of time. I'll just scoop out some with a cocktail stick. And I'll get some of the carrier and some of the pigments, and once I mix it, then it's, it's fine. When I use home roll, sometimes it is glossy, sometimes it is matte. Um, I always use the colours that are supposed to be matte, yes, but, um, but I always, yeah, I, I generally varnish afterwards with, there's a, something called Tester's Dull Coat varnish, a matte varnish, and I generally use that, and it helps to smooth out the finish of the, a, a dull coat. Um, what I do, I can give you the, the um, details after. Now for the, what I do is just get my cocktail sticks and... So you open to that roll again. Okay. Do you use the spray can or the... Oh, I use the brush on type? The brush on type. Yeah. Okay. There are a few things though you need to be careful of when you use that. So maybe we could have a little talk. I'll just explain a couple of things about issues I found with it afterwards if you like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, well how you with apply brush it or? yeah brush but there are certain things i have to, i take certain precautions with it because if you're not careful you can then get shiny patches or shininess so you have to be careful okay so what i want to do now is just accentuate some of the lining or lighten some of the thing areas and then i'll pay particular attention to the the edges of the, mm -hmm. the flat so i'm just going to I'll leave that there for now. I'll probably need some more presently. They weren't stirred up before. No, I, I generally just scoop out some of the pigment with some of the carrier and then... But the thing is, these little tinlets, they seem to have almost doubled in cost since I started painting. So now I tend to use them 
I used to throw them away once they started to get thick, but now I just tend to thin them down more. It, it's got quite costly to keep buying paints. So if I just, yeah. Now I'm not sure if I'll use all of these in this um, mixture I need, but it's just handy to have them. Oh yes, yeah. For this ladder work? Um, I wouldn't use it for any stippling. I might use it, well I probably will use it for the seams and detail mm. components. And I use it for washes, things yeah. like that. But not for stippling because uh, it would be a bit unforgiving. Just, uh, cheaper washes. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I've done before um, is take a, once you've got your, uh, say this is an older yeah, you cut it size zero, yeah, I maybe cut it to about halfway. Yeah. And that's perfect for stippling. Yeah. For a few, you know, a couple of figures yeah. to put weathering and stuff like that. Yeah. It works really well. Because I, I love that randomness mm. that you get from that. If you try and position individual dots yourself, you always, somehow, your brain is trying to make it ordered in some way, yeah. so... Yeah. Maybe your brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one might, this colour might be a bit light for now, so I'll probably leave that there for the time being. Now, I never mix my, uh, colors I'm going to paint with with a good brush I always use one of yeah. like an older yeah. brush and sometimes I'll need to decide which it's probably nearest to this to start with um, now I don't want this too thin mm -hmm. because I want to be able to stipple it I'm just trying to This probably seems hardly worth it. I could probably just use that, but I just want to just try and get mm, that nice. subtle, that subtle difference of. Because mm -hmm. this may be just slightly too strong. Mm. A couple of different colours here. Because what I like to do sometimes is is vary the shade I'm using, even while I'm doing it. So uh, maybe that one I need. So you see that's just a touch lighter than, well, maybe, only slightly. I think the heat of the lamps yeah. will dry this quicker. Okay, so. Well, this is where it could all go terribly wrong if I'm not careful. So I'll just okay. hope for the best. Uh, and we see what happens. I wouldn't normally keep messing around doing these up, but I'm worried that I might knock it all over somebody. Right, so for this, I might just use, this is an older, just to start with, I'm gonna, I'll just see how it goes. Um, this is one of my older brushes, which I've snipped the top off. Yeah. And these can be quite good for, yeah. And what I want to do is just, firstly, I'm going to lighten off this top of this and then I'll try and pay attention to some of the edges just to re-emphasize. You don't have to wait until the oil is dry? Ideally, yes. But I didn't want to make four... Yeah, okay. Uh, it's like Blue Peter, you know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I was hoping I'd be able to show with the black. That yeah. was like a last minute. It's I did... not what we expect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Originally, I was going to do that, but I thought if I get time, the black. So I'm not going to make this too thin. I want to keep it quite thick. So I'll just 
I'll just start where I want this to be. The trouble is, because I can't see it under a magnifier, I can't see mm. what difference it's having quite so clearly. Now on the top of this one, I haven't put any oil paint. So the oil paint I just put here. So this is what would happen when this is virtually dry and you put the humble on top. So what I found by experimenting is that when I stipple on the humbles, it can work very well as a technique to lighten darker colour. That's maybe I need that a bit more yellow. After all this mixing, I go back to the pure. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always a way, isn't it? Yeah, so. This brush is already starting to feel a bit too... I find that rather than rushing into... It's best to just to build it slightly What I would normally do at the end, see now I've lightened that to give... Mm. Now that doesn't necessarily look consistent now, it almost looks too light. But the idea is that once this is all fully dry, I would usually take um, burnt sienna mm -hmm. and light washes just to add a bit of richness to the colour, even though it's lighter, just to re-emphasise mm. that. Um, so after that you do it again with the oil? Only for a wash, yeah. yeah, but when it's fully dry. Um, you see my techniques are all very fussy, I, yeah, I go to a lot yeah. of trouble. Um, I'm going to do something similar to that and just emphasise some of these other areas, but I think I need a slightly smaller brush. So we're getting all kinds of texturing, um, but stippling yeah, can work. Now, just want to re-emphasize some of this. This is too compact. I think I need something that will diffuse a bit more. So I'll go back to this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this happens quite. <laughs> but it's not all is not lost because I'll just stipple that a little bit more and it's it's okay. It's just now it's just tiny little bits that look like tiny s scratches. I can't expect this to be perfect though because uh, it's uh, normally you do this in four normally, weeks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay, now I'm going to just really emphasize the, uh, try and emphasize the, the, the edges of the flap and mm -hmm. just add that contrast. May I have a look? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll mix the color in the I'm meantime. <laughs> I'll probably take some flesh. 
this other color. Maybe this one. Just add some white in. Note to self, if I'm going to do a demo, I need to make sure the paint pot I bring is one that's actually... Yeah. Look, it's a bit... Um, that, that you get more, more intensity in the colors? The raw umber is, um, it's not a very warm color. It's, it's uh, quite a... Greenish, greenish. Yeah, whereas the burnt sienna is the nearer to the final color because it's like that one rich leather. Yeah. So it was... I think it depends on the color of yeah. the object that you it, want. It was if once, you want to do yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, but this is the natural leather color. Yeah, I mean, this is meant to be what was once a very nice, rich leather yeah. that's now yeah. after but some... But if you make a dog or a jacket or something, yeah. then you can choose for other colors. Now there's a... Ah, yeah. <laughs> the thing about the... When you paint the... Want to highlight edges, I always think that it's important to make sure that it's quite a lot lighter, significantly lighter, because you have to, I suppose you have to be quite bold when you're doing that, because uh, otherwise you're not going to emphasize it enough. But at the same time, you have to be careful that it's a color that will not look too pale, uh, or too, um, I like to maintain a, a warmer but lighter color. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, at this point, I'll probably use one of my better brushes. I'll probably get rid of that. Okay, so I tend to use um, a relatively straightforward technique for painting edges of um, straps or um, edges of yeah. any clothing and rather than trying to paint the line I usually drag yeah. the corner of, yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah but bizarrely for a long time I didn't think of that technique I just just one day I just think it came to me so in a dream maybe I, <laughs> I don't know yeah Got to try and get that consistency. Right. Well, let's see. Um, yeah. Just. Um, and you see, I'm not painting a complete line. I'm trying to. You can see already it's, it's emphasizing. In normal circumstances, if I'm painting a highlight line, I would um, change the colour depending on where it, what mm -hmm. was contrasting against it. Um, 
So this top part, I might go lighter. And, mm. uh, I'm just conscious that I've only got about five minutes time left, so on the video. probably isn't quite light enough but What I would also do is um, I would paint some small, just delicate touches into the you know, to emphasise some of the uh, mm. the uh, scratches and so on. It's a bit difficult to see, but I wouldn't necessarily go too far with that. Because I have um, lots of different techniques for different yeah. things. So sometimes I'll use oils, sometimes I'll use humbrols by themselves, sometimes a mixture. Sometimes with some of the pieces I've done one layer or two with oils, let it dry completely, then I'll do the highlights with humbrols mm. or vice versa. Oh. It really, yeah. really depends. Now the good news is the um, colour mix I use when I'm painting black is very simple. Black. It's three colours only. It's the black, yeah, so black, um, leather, oh, humble okay. leather, and ooh, usually humble flesh. Is that that one? No, it's this one. Sometimes for the very lightest colours I will use um, just a touch of white. <coughs> Another thing I do in the very dark areas, I might incorporate a bit of burnt umber. Mm -hmm. If I want to just try and get a little bit of a colour in the darkest black areas. Mm -hmm. Without... That's a very dark... Um, burnt umber. Yeah, it's very dark. Um, uh, there's probably not any here, so I'll just put a little bit on there. Um, So, let's get cracking. Now this, um, I still incorporate some stippling, but some of it I incorporate washes. For this quick demonstration, if I'm doing it in one go, because usually I would do this over two sessions or three, um, I might then do some washes over the dried parts, which I won't be able to do if I'm mm. doing the stippling today. <coughs> um, okay, so there's that. Okay, so usually I use both sides of these. Um, I'm quite, I don't want to waste materials. 
and these I turn inside out afterwards. Yeah. And, oh. yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so generally I mix all of my colors for black with these three, or a combination of them. Now black is one of those colours that does tend to drive it glossy if you work it too much and so generally I have to go over with some kind of varnish so the finish that I get on this may look a bit blotchy in places, some parts might look shinier than others um, but I'd usually even that out with a varnish. Okay, so. So usually to get the first, the base colour, I'm painting black, I just add a bit of leather, uh, leather colour into the black. Because I want the lighter colours not to be too, I suppose, I want to maintain a degree of warmth in the colour. Sometimes I'll incorporate a bit of um, the burnt umber, in, in fact. I'll do that now. The reason I'm putting this in here is I find that sometimes having a bit of oil colour in the humbrel adds to the strength of the, the colour. Um, now, because this isn't going to be a masterpiece, I'm just going to do this quite quickly. This might be a bit darker. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll mix few colours so I can have several shades of colour available to play with. Sometimes put a bit of the So I'm going to just put some of this. In fact, this is probably closer to the base colour I'd normally use. And the trick that I usually try to, to do with this, I keep this quite thin. Keep the, when I'm pieing paint normally, I tend to have it quite thin. Like, mm -hmm. It's still got some opacity, but Now it's important that I try and work briskly so that this doesn't dry and I start adding in, uh, I probably should use a better brush, start adding in, I won't use my best one, I'll use this one that's still reasonably, yeah, it's, uh, this was a good brush for a while but it's past its best now. I'm going to start incorporating these other colours, the paler ones, into say some of the... No, oh, it's already starting to... Again, I'll use a, a stipple motion on these kind of pieces to create 
bit of a texture. How are we doing? Are we uh, out of tape? Okay. Sometimes what I would do then is maybe add a quick, like a, sometimes I'll wetten the surface again and then try and re, mm -hmm. re put in some. Some other. Because yeah, it works better when the surface is wet. Add in the really light colours. Yeah, yeah. So with uh, here we are. Let's start it to. A softer brush works better. Even the same stippling effect with uh, 